In this film I'm going to run through the Sussex chair plans and just give you an update on how they're going. I've been doing lots of drawings and here's some of my little scribbles. So what, what I found really is quite interesting was you know I went to the museum and I took lots of photos, probably about 60 photographs of the Sussex chair at Jeffrey Museum in London and I made up my little sort of composite picture here of what they should look like. Lots of drawings, lots of um, measurements, all on there. Well, as it goes, you come to actually try and do something and I was working around the seat area of the chair and I thought, crikey, how thick do I actually make the seat stretch your parts? So this is a bit which the rush will go around. And I actually concluded I don't need to make them very thick at all. So here's a typical piece. It's so strong, this ash. This was actually fairly green. It still is fairly green now. And um, it still <laughs> seems very, very strong, even a thin bit. So I'm going to slim those down a bit more and make up the seat frame with those. In terms of when you get into the detail, you start looking, trying to work out diagrams. So I'll show you one there. That's my rough sort of sketch for the seat itself. And it's quite tricky, really, getting all your dimensions right. I mean, when you've got photographs, you can, with rulers, I mean, I took my, I took my pictures, just to explain, actually. I took my pictures with a tape measure in front. So you take a picture of a chair, tape measure just in front of it. And the idea being then, you can get a little pair of dividers and you can plot them on the photo and try and draw up a plan. And it sort of works, but obviously you get a little bit of distortion and things and of course you get home and you find you haven't got your ruler in quite the right place or measuring quite the right component so a bit of that's been going on but I've been knocking up these diagrams so that's a sort of like the sketch of the seat I've got another one here which is a sketch of the little turnings in the back the little spindle turnings and also the arm support ones as well so I thought I'd put, do a few little sketches and then I've been taking lots of photos, so the ones I took, I've been printing them out. And I've got them here, lots of different photos, all the different bits, all on my wall and lots more on my computer. Um, I mean, when you see certain ones like this one, you see the actual angle of the arms and how they really do bend quite a lot. So I've been trying to capture that. And then I went on to the Bodgers, the good old Bodgers website, so that's Bodgers dot org dot uk and someone there was talking about re-rushing a couple of Sussex chairs so I actually got pictures of the rush just when the rush had been taken off of the actual seat frame which is great because it actually lets you see roughly what sort of clearances of wood there are underneath that rush and that's the sort of thing you can't see on a museum chair if it's still got its rush in place so quite pleased about that so anyway, I'm surrounded by pictures, been doing lots of drawings, and I've been doing lots of sort of like wood preparation. So my um, dear old sister's yew tree, which got felled last year, or well, parts of it, just really to try and help preserve it. It got fungus, honey fungus in it. So she's still got it, but it's been heavily cut back. It has some quite nice bits of wood in it. So what I've been doing is cleaning it up and just splitting out more bits so I've got lots of bits here all on the side and um, I'll try and turn up the little back turnings with these I think that could be quite nice so we'll see how it goes and the other thing I've been doing is knocking up some bending formers so I'm going to be boiling the sort of arms and the spindles below the arms and also the rear legs so I've been making these like bending formers there's going to be a an opposite one here which will come down in the vise and actually make that straight spindle curve around this surface so that's the idea there this doesn't show exactly what I mean but if you get the idea you clamp that together in a vise excepting it's pressing on these as well so it's a curved piece and that should do it so I'm knocking those up and um, well, I'll show all of this on a separate 
video, but I just really thought I'd just share this with you now to give you a bit of an idea. And really just to give you a bit of a flavour of, you, you take lots of photos, I did feel I was taking hundreds of photos at the time, and you still end up thinking when you actually try and get the detail, well, how does that bit join that bit? And it is quite interesting because you, you get into the mind of the artist come chair maker, their sense of proportion. So on these little turnings, for the back spindles, I suddenly realised they'd actually done them in like proportion. So it, was, it went three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch as the spacings. And you just see little things and you think, yeah, that's, that's nice sort of balance in there. And that's probably why the whole design works overall. So that's one of the joys really, apart from just doing the woodwork, when you do something like copying a chair, you start to get a bit of a sort of feel into the mind of the, of the maker. And that's always quite interesting to me try and see, we see it through our the eyes today, they were in a completely different mindset probably about how they saw things, but that's, that's always quite interesting. So there you are, that's where I am, lots of pictures, lots of bits of wood at the moment, and cutting up formers, but I'll get some videos up of the actual bending of the rear legs, and also the arm pieces as well, so I've got my boiling bath for those, and we'll see how it goes.